Hello again. I'm Sonia and I love science. Let me just see that you guys can see. Oh, good. The reason I love science is not because I am some genius physicist or super fast at solving math problems or particularly savvy in the lab, but I just look around me and I wonder about things and I ask questions and I let my curiosity lead me down a learning pathway. So that's why I'm here with you today on behalf of CK12. Let's do some science. Let's ask some fun questions and travel down a learning pathway together, alone, but together. So it's so great to see you back here today. If you joined me yesterday, we investigated flashlights and the electricity that flows through a flashlight. If you missed it, that's okay. It's on our YouTube channel. Check it out after this. Um, but yesterday when I asked you, what do you think of when you hear the word electricity? Many of you shouted out lightning. And it just so happens. There. A thunderstorm happening at my house right now. Have you ever experienced a thunderstorm? Have you ever seen lightning? Were you scared? Were you excited? Did it make you wonder? Well, that is how most science investigations start. So let's do some science. Here are some of the questions that I'm curious about. Why do some storms create lightning and others don't? Why does thunder always come after lightning? Why do we see lightning before we hear the thunder? Let's explore some of these questions and learn some science on this stormy day. So I want you to start by thinking of lightning as a ginormous electrical spark. Not the most polished scientific definition, but you get the idea. If you've ever pulled something out of the clothes dryer and got shocked, ouch, or walked on carpet and touched a metal doorknob, sap, then you've been struck by teeny tiny lightning. I actually know someone that's been struck by lightning. Shout out to Dave. At least that's what he claims. All right, so why do some storms create lightning and others don't? In certain storms, you have lots of particles colliding in the air and the clouds, just like your clothes collide in the dryer or your shoes collide on the carpet. And this causes electrons to get knocked off the atoms and lots of negative charges build up in one space and lots of positive charges build up in another space. And these free electrons need somewhere to go. And the charge difference gets greater and greater and greater until, snap, lightning strikes. The spark you see is simply current or the flow of electrons from the cloud to the ground, similar to that flow of electrons we talked about in a flashlight. Because these charges are free flowing, they're not stuck to any atoms, we call them plasma. <laughs> Yes, that is where plasma TVs get their name. So go investigate plasma if that interests you after this. CK12 has a lot of cool content on that concept. That would be a really fun learning pathway to go down. Okay, so it's hard to think about lightning without thinking about thunder. The lightning bolt made of plasma heats up the air really fast because it's, it's almost like higher than the hottest thing that you could ever imagine, 20,000 degrees Celsius. And this extreme heat produces a shock wave of sound that we perceive as the sound of thunder. So why do we see the lightning before we hear it? It's because light travels a whole lot faster than sound. Light is actually the fastest traveling thing in the universe, meaning nothing nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. It sets the universal speed limit. Why don't you hop on the CK12 website after this and investigate what the speed of light is? Then try to find the speed of sound in air. You'll see there's a big difference between the two. 
Have you ever counted the number of seconds between lightning and thunder to see how far away a storm was? If you have, then you're doing a linear relationship math problem using time and the speed of sound. You are a physicist. Each lapse of five seconds equals about one mile. So when I see a bolt of lightning and I count, one Mississippi, count with me, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, and then thunder. I know that the lightning struck just one mile away and I better be in a safe place. So that brings me to another question. How do lightning rods on tall buildings keep us safe? Well, CK-12 has a simulation that allows us to visualize all these invisible charged particles in the clouds and in the ground that cause the lightning to strike. And it helps us understand the science behind lightning rods. So let's play around. Right now, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna go to the CK-12 website and find the lightning rod simulation. But these links are all posted um, below our video so that you can easily find everything that you'll need. One second here. All right. Okay, there we go. So here we are at the CK12 homepage, feels like home to me, at www.ck12.org. And we are going to scroll down to the simulations and click there. And it just so happens, hey, lightning rod is the first sim here. And here is that simulation we worked on yesterday. So let's launch it. Okay, so here's our big question. Why do buildings have lightning rods? I'm gonna play this intro video. So here we have kind of what I was talking about with all that in, the invisible charges overlaid. The static charge builds up in the clouds. Can you see all those positive and negative symbols in the clouds? Those are the charges colliding and building up. All right, they're wiggling. So then the charge separation occurs within the clouds. Let's watch this happen. The positive charges line up, negative charges line up, and on the ground, you could see positive charges line up. All right, so the field is getting strong. And now we see a conducting path between the cloud and the ground is created. There's our tube of plasma where the electrons are flowing rapidly, lightning struck. Okay, let us go into the sandbox at this time. And the cool part about this simulation is you guys, we get to create lightning. Okay, so based on what we discussed earlier, I have the ability to adjust the cloud height. I have the ability to adjust the charge separation, meaning how much positive charge I have and how much negative charge I have. And then this um, slider that says overlay, there's a lot of higher level physics concepts that we can learn through the model of a lightning strike. We can learn about electric fields, electric potentials. And so if you are at that level, go ahead and play around with that slider. And then lastly, we have the ability to put a lightning rod on our building to see what it does. So I am going to try to create a lightning strike. Let's adjust the cloud height to be really low and let's bump it. Let's put the charge separation really high. Okay, I'm gonna press play. Hang on, seek shelter. Boom, lightning strikes. All right, so I'm going to leave you here right now to kind of play around and let me um, hop back here. And what I'd like you to do is hop on the simulation and try to make a lightning strike. Try to figure out what the lightning rod does to keep the building safe. 
Other fun learning pathways to go down is don't forget to go find out that the speed of light and compare it to the speed of sound in air. And then some things to kind of investigate is does sound travel the same speed in air as it does water? One fun question is this, if you scream in outer space, would anyone be able to hear you? All things to ponder, learning pathways to go down. Click on the links below the video to explore. And remember that um, here we have our real world examples and there's many questions that lead to other learning pathways. Does lightning always produce thunder? Check that one out. And I hope you'll tune back again tomorrow. We're gonna to learn more about electricity and how it flows through our house by studying the model of a dollhouse. So I hope you'll tune in and join me again tomorrow and have fun making lightning strike. See you later.